pardon me guys as I know we're live here already but I'm just trying to get you guys adjusted here on the screen a little bit better um, we do have breaking news RT is reporting this as well already uh, I'm Stephen Benoon you're watching Israeli News Live and um, here on January and I don't even know the date that's terrible isn't it anyway guys bear with me just a moment here I wanted to get this going pretty quickly here and um, uh, to share with you here, uh, our good friend Lorenzo here on just, uh, or excuse me, already happened, uh, was the first one that actually that I had saw that posted uh, China moving a brigade, a brigade of um, uh, nuclear ICBM uh, capable warheads there uh, to their northeastern province there. Now he had also reported uh, the DF-41 ICBMs moving that area weeks ago, already in route, and that's on this video footage here. I want to just share with you here uh, where they were already headed there. And it's not just one. As I said, it's a brigade of these that are being moved there. And, um, and so there were set, quite a few of those actually in route there. And I, I certainly believe, uh, I, I, we, we, we chatted back and forth a little bit, me and Lorenzo, about this, that this is clearly... Um, not directed at Russia. Russia has already stated that they do not consider this a threat uh, to their own national security with these uh, ICBMs on their border, although they are right there on the border of Russia. Let me just quickly run over here to Google Maps for you here so you can see this is the province right here uh, where the ICBMs have been moved to, right here in the far northeastern corner. But if you notice, it does two things. One, it puts Japan much closer in the crosshairs. You could say they could move it here or here, either way. But when you get up to here, what it does in this case here, it puts Alaska, it puts the west coast of the United States, Washington, Oregon, California, all in the crosshairs of, um, of the United States in China's crosshairs. And it is clearly evident that this is what's going on. Now, if you go, if we go back and look at uh, already happened, if we look at some of the things here, it says uh, right here, he says, we urge the U.S. to respect the fact, speak and act cautiously to avoid harming the peace and stability of the South China Sea. Who said uh, that was uh, a statement that was made there? Let me real quick, uh, let's jump over here to RT, who is also reporting this breaking news here. Uh, January 24th, which by the way, that's today. I apologize on my dates there. Uh, China reportedly deployed ICBMs near Russia's border. That's uh, what they're saying there. Beijing has deployed advanced uh, Bongfeng 41 ICBMs in the Halongyang province, which borders Russia, according to reports based on images possibly leaked to coincide with Donald Trump's inauguration as U.S. president. Pictures of China's Dongfeng 41 ballistic missiles were exposed uh, on Chinese mainland websites, the Global Times said, citing reports in, the, in, in, the, in some Hong Kong and Taiwan media. Russian news agencies identified one of them as the Apple Daily, a Hong Kong-based tabloid-style resource. It was revealed that the pictures were taken in Hlongyang province. Military analysts believe that this is perhaps the second Dongfeng 41 strategic missile brigade, and it should be deployed in the northeastern China. The report in the Chinese daily uh, as the Global Times works under the auspices of the People's Daily. The official newspaper of the Chinese Communist Party through the former tends to be more controversial. And uh, I, I would have to say, without going into the entire article, we'll post this here in the description, uh, both on Is Israeli News live stream as well as Israeli News Live on YouTube here, uh, so you can read the rest of the article here. But m what, I, what it seems to me, since uh, President Trump has taken uh, that position now as president of the United States, there is a lot of tension built up between him and China. Uh, he's talking about completely redoing the trade relations that, that he has with China. Uh, Trump is uh, very much has an aggressive stance when it comes to the South China Sea. He's already broke status quo with contacting Taiwan uh, directly. And uh, which, you know, shouldn't be a big issue to begin with with China. Why does China want to make a big issue out of contacting Taiwan? Uh, you know, but the way it's been status quo with every president of the United States thus far, though, uh, that's not something that is normally done. So um, that's why it's become a big issue. And so therefore, China, definitely, if nothing else, we can see that China is clearly um, starting up their own 
uh, Cold War with the United States. So much for Russia and the United States having a Cold War, it's China and the U.S. having their own Cold War. As well, Syrian armed rebels reaffirm commitment to the ceasefire, demand Assad steps, uh, but they're demanding that Assad step down. Um, you know, I think that's kind of pretty provocative statement for them to be doing that. Uh, of course, the U.S. under the Obama administration has been backing these, uh, I would consider them more thugs than I would uh, uh, a, an opposition group when there's 35 nations, uh, rep or 35 nationalities, not nations, but 35 nationalities represented by this uh, so-called group that is uh, a, a, a rebel or, or a pro-Syrian um, Syri group, excuse me, not pro-Syrian, but against Syria. Uh, speaking at the talks there. The talks, though, they say have been heated at times, but they have been making cease, uh, headway for a ceasefire throughout Syria. And of course, uh, that's uh, Russia, Iran, and Turkey that agree on the established mechanism to support Syrian ceasefire in, 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 in Geneva talks. Uh, so it's going to no doubt move from where they're doing their talks now in Astana uh, and more than likely go to Geneva next. It's kind of interesting how Russia is really becoming a major player in bringing about uh, peace talks on world events. They've taken a, a, a straightforward approach and uh, since Obama was so lacking in that area and they really come on strong as a world leader uh, in fact and I think that's what's also troubling Europe right now as we mentioned the other day that uh, Kaliningrad is uh, Europe's Cuban Missile Crisis. That's another thing that doesn't seem to be going away anytime soon. I thought perhaps that when uh, President Trump would have got into office that he would have made that one of the first things on his agenda in dealing, uh, getting with Russia, backing off some of the troops and forces inside of Europe and the Baltics, Estonia, Latvia, uh, and uh, Lithuania. Poland especially, but it's not happening. And of course, I can understand to some degree, although it was Obama that kind of uh, really exacerbated the issue there by putting so many troops on Russia's border and then turn around and blaming Russia for the crisis in Ukraine when it was actually the uh, Obama administration was the one guilty for the Ukraine crisis in the first place. But now Russia has nukes uh, sitting in Kaliningrad, and that's like having nukes sitting in Cuba. It is a major crisis, and of course Russia was doing tit for tat. That's a pretty big uh, uh, tat for the tit that they had to start with, but uh, it, it's still coming down to be a very, very serious situation, and I do not know how that's going to resolve out. Uh, anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, and uh, don't forget to check us out on live stream as well. We are running our broadcast live there. You can catch these broadcasts at least 30 minutes or so before they make YouTube. Shalom.